video is brought to you by Let Synthesize Academy, the number one place for practice-oriented courses for serious music producers. Hey, Dad Larson here, so Ableton 11 is here. And in this video, I'm going to show you my favorite features, new features for new road drum and bass. And I also made a very cool rack that turns any sound into an awesome new road bass through this little groove I made. <laughs> So, like always, you can download this whole thing from my Patreon below. And if you want to dig deeper into neuro production, check my academy for a full noise of style start to finish masterclass. But right now, let's jump into it. Okay, so here is the sound without the rack. It's pretty boring, let me show you the preset. So it's basically just a dist 8 bit whatever wavetable with 7 voices of unison and I used two LFOs to add some movement to it, you know, by going through the wavetable position and some asymmetric plus minus warping mode going up and down. So this is the only thing here. The main sound itself is not very interesting, but if you drop the new row whatever rack on it, <laughs> The difference is significant, so I really love this thing. And especially in Ableton Live, you know, you have lots of racks to work with and you have these snapshots. So I try to randomize the settings here in the rack and I try to add the snapshots that I really like. So this is the smoother one. We have a weird, a very unisony washed out kind of thing. One filtered. And two filtered. So let me show you what happens inside the rack. So I have several stuff here, but the other thing that I really love in Ableton 11 is a hybrid reverb. Now, if you've worked with Ableton 10 and if you have the suite, you have the Max for Live convolution reverb. Now, in 11, we have the hybrid reverb, but it's native, so we don't need to use Max for Live for that. It's a lot more stable, it's a lot lighter on the CPU. But what I'm doing here is I dropped one bass sound. Let me show you to which one I used. This thing. Dropped in as an impulse response. As you can see, I'm in the user folder and I'm using the C0. After that, I decided to use only the convolution, so I didn't want to use the regular reverb because this is not the point here, but the convolution itself. So I really love this because if you pull back the decay, basically you won't have any tail coming from the, uh, it just colors the sound. And with the size, basically what you do is you transpose the impulse response up and down. So if we go with 200% size um, variation or size value, uh, you have a very different sound than, for example, in the next instance when you have only 100%. So 100% gives a lot brighter sound and the 200 and above uh, it creates a very dark sound. So I really love this thing. So if I disable every other sound or effect, you will hear the difference. So this is what the 200% creates. And if I go lower, So it adds a very nice middle low rumble actually, but in a very cool and clean way. So next I added another instance, but this time with just 100%. So basically it plays the same sound, it doesn't transpose it up and down. But we need to add the amount to it. Okay, so as you can see, Convolution is very important to new row bases. Now the low pass filter is here because, you know, I used so much distortion and I wanted to make sure that I don't get only noise because if you have lots of high frequencies that you distort, you can easily go to noisy direction. So this is not was my goal, but have a clean and powerful and strong new row base. So this is why we need a low pass filter here before huge distortion. Then I added a chorus base. Okay and another flanger well this is a flanger but the first instance of flanger and another flanger to go crazy with that <laughs> then this is another very cool stuff in ableton live now that i love this spectral resonator 
because you can add unison voices to it. So what I'm doing with the resonator is I'm just using it as a unison voice generator, so it's a unison effect. But it's very, very cool. Adds so much depth to the sound. Now here comes the distortion. So I'm using a wave shaper, and by tweaking these sliders, I was able to come up with a very, very harsh, but very cool distortion. Now the distortion was not able to create this cool sound without the previous chorus and other effects. Let me show it to you. So you can hear the extra voices that is made by the chorus, the two instances of Langer and the spectral resonator. Have the saturator to give very nice tone. Then after the saturator, or the wave shaper, actually this is the wave shaper, I added again two instances of choruses. So right now we have a very nice washed out sound, but still have the grit from the saturator. So voices before saturation or wave shaping instead, and voices after wave shaping can be a very good idea, but be careful with the voices here, especially after, because you know you don't want to again push the sound into a noisy direction because with lots of voices you can easily do that. So try to be tonal. Then I tried to add some multiband compression, but not at OTT. I didn't want to go crazy with the OTT and I cranked up the high band basically to add more tops to it. So this is a very important part of the sound. Let me show you without the saturator. It still has that very nice deep tone coming from the convolution, uh, well, the hybrid reverb convolution, but we definitely need this cool grit. Okay, then I added the notch feeder. Lots of cool, very nice movements here. And another saturator by just boosting the volume. Then another multiband compression, so just a slight compression. To clean up the sound. Some very, very slight overdrive. As you can see, I'm pulling back the drive, cranked up the tone, no dynamics, and I'm only on 50% wet. Okay, then an EQA to smoothen out the middle low frequencies, adding some sub, tame the mid high frequencies, and cut the very, very highs and the limiter to the end, where I added extra 5 decibels of volume. Okay, so this was the rack itself, and what I really love in Ableton Live 11 again is the comping feature. We can play with happy accidents that, you know, in Euro production it is a very common thing, but first I need to make sure that I can play with, uh, with the pitch band wheel, for that I need to click on this plus icon, so I'm overdubbing the already existing MIDI. So right now let's record what we are doing with this preset, with the rack, and then we can make some magic. Okay, so right now we have lots of cool sounds we can choose from, also some very harsh and noisy and unusable sounds, but if I click on the show take lanes, you see we have lots of lanes, and if you hit Ctrl B, you can choose from different takes. <laughs> Try to find some interesting parts. So this can be an interesting loop here. And obviously we need to make some adjustments to it to make it less clicky. You can go forward with this. Yeah. <laughs> 
And actually this has a very nice, very nice groove to it. So let me try to put a drum loop on it. Okay, I just realized that I'm at 120, so this will not work as a drum and bass groove. But anyway, you get the idea and you get the sounds, how to make them really cool. But this already is a very, very nice sound. So by simply tweaking this little groove by, you know, taking little samples and putting back and forth in the loop, you can create very, very cool stuff that you can hear in the intro. And once again, if you want to download that, go to my Patreon or if you want to dig deeper into new raw production or any other style production, check my academy for full start to finish courses. I was Dan Larson. See you guys next time. Peace.